Good morning and a happy Lord's Day to each one of you. What a day. We have sunshine or maybe the promise of it, which is almost as good. Uh, and uh, we welcome any of you who are visiting with us this morning. And we want to say welcome to all of those joining us on Zoom. We invite all of you here in the sanctuary to stay for refreshments and fellowship following the service. I'm afraid you people on Zoom will have a bit of a stretch to do that, but um, we welcome all of you. Next Sunday, uh, Peter will return after his vacation, and we trust that he and Shauna have had, a, had some rest after moving to their new home. I'm not sure that moving is the most restful way to spend your holiday, but the reward is that you have a new home, and so we... We wish Peter and Shauna well in it. Uh, this morning we are also pleased to have the Reverend Dr. Stan Dyer, one of our very own, to bring his message to us. Thank you, Stan. You are always such a blessing to each and every one of us. The leadership team would want me to say a thank you, a special thank you to Barb for taking on extra administrative duties over the holiday time. We really do appreciate how Barb can keep us all on track so that we uh, have our morning service uh, well in order. And we appreciate the Reverend Charles Jackson for taking on standby pastoral care of the flock while Peter is on vacation. So thank you, Charles. And thank you to all of you for your attendance and your faithful support during these summer weeks. Those lower lights that I referred to last Sunday have not so much as flickered. So thank you and bless all of you. Our call to worship is printed on PowerPoint and we're going to read it responsively as you see it is taken from Psalm 100. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter And together we read, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Our God and loving Father, this is the day that we have set aside to worship you together in the spirit of truth. Accept the words that we speak, the music we offer, and the very thoughts we think. May they all be acceptable in your sight. As we come together, bless the bond we have with one another, for we seek to serve you well and to encourage one another in our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we meet and that we pray. 
We're so happy this morning to have Tim and Steph Roseboro to lead us in worship through music. Tim and Steph, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. It's been a little while. And uh, yeah, the promise of sunshine is always really lovely on a Sunday morning. And it's great to come together and sing. And in, in the spirit of that psalm, uh, let's, let's stand and sing, Shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i have in you my jesus my savior lord there is none like you all of my days i want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. I see a face in every sunrise the colors of the morning are inside your eyes the world awakens in the light of the day i look up to the sky and say you're beautiful Ooh. 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 
I see your power in the moonlit night Where planets are in motion and galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who you are You're beautiful I see you there hanging on a tree You bled and then you died and then you rose again for me Now you are sitting on your heavenly throne Soon we will be coming home You're beautiful When we arrive at eternity shore Where death is just a memory and tears are no more We'll enter in as the wedding bells ring Your bride will come together and we'll sing Your beautiful I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Ooh. Ooh. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned and I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be, that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true And it's my joy to honor you In all I do, I honor you I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted, you were condemned and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me Because you died and rose again Amazing love, how can it be That you, my King, would die for me Amazing love, I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you In all I do, I honor you
You are my King. You are my King. Jesus, You are my King. Jesus, You are my King. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You. You are my King. You are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. You may be seated. new to me and what a beautiful song that was we are going to further worship our Lord as we bring to him our tithes and our offerings so we would ask the ushers to come forward and receive your tithes and your offering and then when they have done that we will they will come to the front and we will have our prayer together Almighty God, all that we have, we received from your hand. You call us to be good stewards of your abundance and faithful caretakers of what you have entrusted to us. Accept these gifts, these tithes, and with them our lives to be used in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and unite our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before you this morning as a people blessed by your presence in our lives. We come as a people blessed by Christ's redeeming grace. 
How thankful we are to be his, set free by his precious blood. How thankful we are for one another, a family of believers in a loving Savior. How thankful we are to live in this country, free to worship you, to meet in this your house of worship, and to share together in the faith that unites us. Grant that we might never take any of these things for granted. We are indeed blessed. Our God, we thank you for your holy word, given, preserved, and true. Thank you for those who help us understand its meaning, its truth, and its application to our lives. We are grateful for our pastor and pray that he might return from his vacation refreshed and renewed for his work among us. We pray as well for all who contribute to the ministry here at Lakefield Baptist Church, each one in his or her own way, drawing us closer to the Lord we serve and to one another. Grant that we might each be a blessing to the other. And so we pray for our ministry and our witness in our community and beyond. May the true light of Christ, our Redeemer, shine bright and strong to bear witness of our faith in him. Our God, this morning we are thankful for the ministry of Stan Dyer. He has served you well in so many capacities, each bringing the message of the gospel clear and true. May your spirit speak through him this morning to receptive hearts and minds. So we thank you, our God, for Stan and for Marg and all that they do in the name of Jesus Christ for us here at Lakefield Baptist Church. Thank you, our God, for all of those who use their gifts to bring the gospel message for Tim and Steph who minister through their music. Thank you for all who contribute to our worship and our time together each Sunday. We claim ownership in the witness of this little church to the communities around us and indeed far beyond. Loving God, with all that we have, we are still a people with needs, the need to be encouraged, the need to be strengthened in faith and body. There are those among us who faith health issues, for we are vulnerable to the afflictions of body, mind, and soul. May we feel the strength of your healing hand, your guiding spirit, and your loving heart. And this morning, our God, we, we bring a person to you. Her name is Linda, and she is a friend of Nancy Gillespie's. She is awaiting results from a test. So we pray your healing hand upon her. We pray for good news from those tests. Our God, we are privileged to live in this land, blessed beyond measure when we compare our lot to that of so many in this troubled world. And so we pray for all of those who must eke out an existence daily with the constant fear of war, aggression, persecution. How we pray for peace and stability in this world of ours. But good as it is, our land is not without its troubles. There is poverty, there is sickness, there is crime, addiction, violence, even here in our own community. There is prejudice, abuse, and hatred. There are governments, agencies, and countless individuals striving to find solutions. And so we pray for all efforts to bring relief. Our God, in our world, in our time, many have simply turned their backs on things of the Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to have his way. Open the hearts of people everywhere to the message of the gospel and the hope, the joy, the love, and the power that it holds. 
it is in Jesus name that we offer these our prayers this morning. Good morning. Our reading this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 1 to 3. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is, is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. May God add his blessing on the reading of his word this morning. The, whoops. <laughs> no, we're not gonna sing whoops. Um, let's stand and sing the wonderful hymn, How Great Thou Art. Pioneer Village uh, for the evening service, not service, I'm a churchy kind of person, I just use that lingo. It was, um, what was it called, Jim? 
the lighting, something like that. And it kind of tied in with the series of, of, of Bob, Bob's message. And um, at the end of the evening, when it got really dark, at Lang, there's no electrical interference for the heavens, and it started to lightning. And, and there's layers of, of gray clouds and black clouds and it was really awesome. So when we were singing that, it really brought it home. Anyway, Dr. Stan Dyer. <laughs> Thank you. It is certainly a privilege and an honor for me to be able to share this morning with you good folks from the Word. I count it a real privilege, and I deeply appreciate Pastor Peter and Shauna, and we are praying that God will bring them back to us in the fullness of the Spirit to minister to us here at uh, Lakefield Baptist Church. Sometimes I think we are maybe shortchanging our God. Sometimes we think, yes, he does miracles way back then, and he does miracles somewhere else, but sometimes he wants to do that great and mighty within us, and in our midst. And this morning I pray that God would in some way, as you see, I cannot have a Bible or notes, but that God would in some way uh, give his message uh, through this voice to you. We pray that he would be here. Let's bow just for a moment. Dear Father, uh, we commit these next few moments into your care. We thank you, Lord, that we can depend upon a God of miracles, even in this day, even in this place. And we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my Redeemer. And we pray in the powerful name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Some time ago, you remember that Pastor Peter uh, spoke from the words of Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33. I want to continue on with this same theme. In Je Jeremiah was in prison, and the word of the Lord came to him. And as you recall, uh, Pastor Peter read, Call upon me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Now, he talked about the calling. He talked about him answering. But I want to focus more this morning on the g &M factor, the great and mighty. That is not just in the world. That is not just in the Old Testament, New Testament time, but it's a great and muddy, mighty in our lives, right here, now, today, in us. Because every one of us has a great and mighty. And every one of us has a place where God wants to bless and to use for his glory. Call upon me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You see, this is the words from Jeremiah. Jeremiah has been considered the weeping prophet, the prophet of tears. In fact, he wrote a whole book that's in the Bible, and it's called Crying. Did you know that? crying. It is, of course, the book of Lamentation. And right in the middle of this book that is filled with tears, 
He talks about the children that die of hunger at the top of every street. He talks about my eyes have, have been shedding the tears day and night for my people. But in the middle of this sorrowful, disastrous, dangerous, despicable world that he lived in, and this prophet that he wrote, in the middle of this, this wonderful book, the book of tears, he pulls back the curtain just a little, and he says, Thy mercies are good every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And of course, Dr. John Chisholm, he took those words, and he made that beautiful hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. I have seen a little bit of those greatness of the faithfulness of our God. And I want to put that verse kind of over, uh, over edging over this word from uh, uh, from Jeremiah 33. I remember it was probably back in the mid-70s. I had just returned with my family to Japan, and I was down at the city hall. We were living in the suburb of Tokyo, the northwestern suburb, at the campus where our Bible seminary was located. And uh, I was down at the city hall doing some business of getting back into the country and alien registration and all that kind of thing. And the one of the workers at the city hall approached me and he said, Mr. Dyer, would you be able to have an English class at here at the city hall once a week? And I jumped at the chance. I always wanted to be able to build relationships for evangelism and for the cause of the kingdom. And so every, I think it was Tuesday night, we met, and uh, quite a group of the city workers met with us for our study of English. Then one day I remember the door, the nor the, there was a knock on the door, and Mr. Kobayashi, the one who had come to me, stood there and he said, Mr. Dyer, would you teach to me the Bible? I said, of course I would. And so we had a Bible study out of the book of the Gospel of Luke. Now, Mr. Kobayashi and his precious wife, they had two boys. I think they were somewhere around five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. And then they had a very precious little girl, finally. And the little girl was only less than a year old. And they were living in a one-room flat there in the city of Higashimariyama. One night after midnight, Dr. Mr. Kobayashi woke with a start as his little baby girl was screaming. Her body was starting to go blue and she was gasping for breath and he didn't have time to call 911. He knew his little girl was dying and all filled with mucus and she couldn't breathe and uh, she was in desperate situation and he was telling me later he said there laying on the tatami mat floor under the photons i reached my hand over and laid it on my little girl's chest and i prayed oh mr dyer's god please touch my little girl he said, suddenly, the mucus was gone. The crying stopped. And she went into a nice, solid sleep. And then he said to me, he said, Mr. Dyer, your God's a powerful God, isn't he? And I never forgot that. And you know, even in the humdrum of day to day to day, our God is a God of miracles, and we should not forget it. God is a God of miracles. And you know, I was thinking of this message this morning, and there was this call that came to Jeremiah 
to pray and to ask God for those great and mighty things. And then there was something that I felt I needed to add to that verse, another option that we would need to look at. And I want to look very briefly as we think of this voice of God through Jeremiah, I want us to look over into the New Testament. And there in the second book of the letter to the Corinthian church, you see, Paul had been a missionary to uh, Asia, an Asia minor, but then on his second missionary journey, he went from Asia to Europe as he journeyed into Philippi. And you know what happened there in Philippi. And then he dropped down because of persecution. They left uh, Philippi and Thessalonica and then on down to uh, Corinth. And uh, in Corinth, of course, he stayed for probably a, a couple of years. And uh, he was a tent maker and he made tents to survive there as he preached the gospel and built the church there in Corinth. Well, things didn't go too well. And of course, on the third journey, he stopped there as well. But then there was that time when the shackles went on his hands and on his feet. And he entered the boat that took him eventually, or another boat took him to Rome. You remember the shipwreck and so on. But there in Rome, as he was between a guard, two guards and shackles and chains, he got news from Corinth that the church was floundering. And it was the most uh, disastrous and the most troublesome of all of his churches. Apparently, there was all kinds of schism. Uh, there was the uh, divisions between one far party and another party. And the whole church was wrecked with all this kind of backbiting and jealousy and, and fierce uh, anger and so on. Certainly not a godly church for God to worship, for God to be worshiped in. And so he couldn't go. He couldn't minister there except through letters. And these two letters that he wrote, he focused, of course, the answer to a troubled church is Jesus. And so in these two verses, in these two chapters, in these two books, letters, he mentioned Jesus, I think, over a hundred times. But in the second book, there was a verse I want to mention this morning. And then around that verse, I want to tell two or three stories. The verse, uh, as you recall, maybe all oh, three or four months ago, uh, I was behind this same pulpit and I talked about this wonderful, wonderful verse that Paul wrote in uh, 2 Corinthians 8 9. Uh, for we know, the love, the, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty, could be rich, a wonderful, wonderful verse. And I called it the, the extremity of his poverty was that cruel time on the cross when he looked to the skies and all he saw was the darkness of the sky. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Wonderful verse that showed how Jesus went to the very depths of even accepting sin, as Paul said, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And that was 2 Corinthians 8.9. But if we twist that and we say 2 Corinthians 9.8, that's a whole different verse. And I would love for you to maybe take your Bible and underline this verse. It's my uh, theme for my whole life, this verse in 2 Corinthians 9.8. Now I want to tag it along with this word in Jeremiah. Paul writes, God is faithful. And this is a common word from the Apostle Paul. God is faithful. And he knew experientially that our God was a faithful God. God is able. God is able. 
to make all grace abound, that we having all sufficiency in all things can abound unto every good work. What a verse. You see, Paul is saying the, the ability of God means that we are supplied sufficiently. It says abundance. We have an abundance from the Father. But you see, what I want to emphasize this morning to dear, dear people is that God not only wants to bless us and give us and supply to us, but he wants to bless through us. And the verse says, God is able to make all grace abound, that we having all sufficiency in all things, and this is it, that we may abound unto every good work. You see, the, the church here in Lakefield is a church for worship. It's a church for singing. It's a church for hearing the Word of God and that we can be blessed and upheld and lifted on Sunday morning with the message from Pastor Peter. But you see, God says it doesn't stop here. This church is here not just to, be a, not just to bless us together, but to be a blessing and to be an outreach and to show the love of God out there on the streets of Lakefield and Peterborough. We are here not just to be served, but we're here to serve. And that is the, the, the theme, I believe, that Paul is trying to say in this wonderful verse. God is able. God is able. And that he can supply those needs that we have and that we face day by day by day. But through that, he wants to work through us up to the hurting people outside. I remember I had been in uh, Japan about a year and a half, way back in the 50s, and uh, I was uh, asked by the uh, director to go down to Okinawa. Now, Okinawa at that time was an American protectorate, and of course, in the Second World War, some of the fiercest battles were in what was called the Battle of Okinawa. And uh, there was a very godly lady there that had, I think, even graduated from our seminary. Her husband had passed away, and she was going to Okinawa years, but she wanted to have the mission and a church there in Naha. And she invited us to come down, and I was to lead a team to Okinawa to minister to the people. In fact, this little booklet that we used in our distribution, it was a 20-page book, and it was called Anshin no Michi. world peace and national peace, but personal, individual, heart peace. And we gave these out by the thousands, door to door and home to home as we went. Well, backing up on the story, we were designed, we were planning to leave from the southern port city of Kagoshima by boat for a three-day, three-night on the ocean to arrive in Naha, Okinawa. My dear mother, back here in Ontario, she had a little radio up on the mantel. And uh, in the morning when the men were out doing their chores and she was would be getting breakfast, she would turn the radio on for a uh, news of the world and sports of the world and the weather of the world and so on. So this particular morning, she turned the radio on and listening to the news, and then the meteorologist came on, and he said, now we wanted to report a very, very fierce and severe typhoon, and it's heading for the water south of Japan. And it's one of the worst we've seen 
and is heading for those waters south of Japan. My mom turned off the radio, left her kitchen, and went upstairs to her prayer room and began to pray, as only mom could pray. She wrestled with God until suddenly there was peace, and she knew that somehow God had answered prayer. She went back downstairs and finished her breakfast and through the day, and then the next morning turned the radio on, the same radio, to the same station, I think it was CFRB, and the meteorologist said, yesterday we mentioned a major typhoon, furious typhoon, heading for the waters south of Japan. For some strange reason, that mighty typhoon suddenly turned and went out to sea. And we meteorologists looked at those schemes and all of the news that we got. We can't understand it, but it happened. And Mom looked up at the ceiling and said, thank you, Jesus. And um, a week later, I received a message about what had happened. And, you know, some of us could say, oh, it was just coincidence. But I firmly believe that that God-man that slept in that fisherman's boat that, that night and that tempest raged across Lake of Galilee. And then he woke up and he lifted up his hand and he shouted to the winds, peace be still, stop all your fury. And suddenly everything was calm and the ripples, so just very minor ripples on the face of the water. He had stilled the storm then and he still the storm in September of 57, and he'll still the storm today. He is still the God of miracles. I want to tell a couple of Old Testament stories that I think bear this out, that the God who wants to work in us is also the God who wants to work through us. Back in Genesis, the 12th chapter, we have a very, very amazing story. And Abraham and Sarah were sitting in their palatial tent, if a tent could be palatial. And uh, he was a rich man. He looked down across the valleys, and there were the flocks and flocks of, of sheep and goats and cattle and donkeys and camels and he was considered one of the more wealthy men of the Near East at the time. Then God came to him. He knew that he and Sarah were barren. They had no children. And he wondered who he would leave all this wealth to. Then the voice of God, and here we find the story in Genesis 12. And God came to Abraham with three promises. The first promise was that his posterity would be like the stars of the sky and like the sands on the seashore in number. And they became very, very numerous. If you remember in Exodus, the first part of Exodus, when it says that the Israelites multiplied so much that even the Pharaoh got scared. And there was a ban on any boys being born, and if they were born, off came their heads. And Moses was born in this time of fury, and only a God who could plan the details could plan that a little baby in a little basket in a crocodile-infested Nile could be saved not only from the crocodiles, but could be saved from the Pharaoh and grew up to be God's man that led this company out, and probably by that time, they had numbered maybe a million and a half. They multiplied. But here was Abraham, and he's looked out over the tent, through the tent flaps, and he said, but God, something's wrong here. I'm old. My wife is old. We're 
We, it's impossible. You know that. You know how men are and how women are. God says it's going to be. And a few years later, <laughs> you know, Abraham was nursing, was rocking that little boy Isaac. But you see the promises, not only the posterity, but that posterity would have a very special land in which to dwell. And even yet today, we call it the Holy Land, you know. But the third promise was that you will, you will be blessed. And, as I mentioned earlier, you would be a blessing. That through you and through this posterity, through this that Abraham couldn't even conceive of what was happening. And Sarah couldn't conceive, period. And so what? how could this ever be? But that posterity, as we look down in the ages and the generations and the generations, there was a man, that little baby, another little baby born in a manger that evening, you remember? And... 33 years later, carrying that heavy cross, walked through the Via Della Rosa and up to that hill where he laid out his hands and those rusty spikes pierced his hands and his feet. Now he was a blessing. And then it says to Abraham that in your posterity, all nations of the world would be blessed. Then we find in the book of Revelation, around the throne one day, and you and I, we'll be there. We'll be singing a song, but we'll be gathered in that great chorus when people from all nations and, cl and climes and countries and, and play peoples. And that very word from God to Abraham will be verified and will become true as we have that great multitude in heaven. See, God worked with Abraham and worked and blessed Abraham and was a great God of miracles to Abraham. But it was through Abraham that God was able to bless the world. One more story. One of the descendants of Abraham a little boy was sitting out there under a maybe a big oak tree with his little harp in his hand and watching the sheep. And maybe even as a child was writing down with his quill and papyrus some of these great psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and so on. And then he saw his father coming towards him and he said, hi, dad. And uh, his father said, I've got a job for you to do. He said, here's the lunch. I want you to take it to your brothers that are fighting with Saul over there in the battlefield. And so David went, and the brothers were very, very nasty and scorned him and scoffed at him. Here's this little fellow coming to see the war, and he can't do anything. And just about that time, up on the hill, there was a thunderous voice he could hear the voice of Goliath, nine feet tall, with all of his metal and his armor and his helmet and his sword and his spear and his armor bearer and all coming out with all the uh, attachments of war. He heard the voice of Goliath saying, send me a man and we'll fight one to one. Then he realized that here, was an uncircumcised Gentile defying God, not only the armies of Israel, but the God of Israel. And he said, I can go out. And Saul and some of the others said, oh, that's, that's really not very possible. That is actually impossible. And they tried to put some armor on him. You know the story. But, saw, but David went down to the brook and those five little smooth stones and put them into his little pocket. And he took one and maybe, maybe when Goliath was laughing and, and hilarious, his helmet may have slipped just a little bit. And 
David saw the chance, and that stone went to that Goliath's forehead, and he went down, and Israel was victorious. And I can almost hear, this is extra biblical, but I can almost hear David say, now, bring me four more giants. I'm ready, you know. You see, what David realized, and many of us don't maybe, is that nothing plus God is a majority. Nothing plus God is a majority. And here David won the war, but it wasn't just a war of that afternoon. It was a preparation for a king to come, the greatest king that Israel ever had. And through him and through his posterity, Jesus came. And so I want to assure you this morning, the wonderful words that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. God is able. God is able to do more and exceeding abundantly. God is able to make all grace abound, but you having all sufficiency in all things, you and Lakefield Baptist Church can abound unto every good work. I want to close right now, but I want to do something that I very seldom do. I feel that maybe God would like to have a visible response from us this morning. I can remember one more little story. I remember I was out in Winnipeg many, many years ago, and I was uh, visiting and actually teaching at the Providence Bible College and Seminary there just south of, of Winnipeg. And they asked me to give a missions message in chapel. And uh, I was there. They said, you have about 20 minutes. And so I was ready with the message. And there was a girl in the, uh, the one of the students that apparently had gotten into some trouble. I don't know just what it was. But she got up and kind of testified, and it went on and on and on and on and i realized that my time was just about god and i i stood up and i said now uh, i've put my the message of the missions in my pocket but i believe that god wants to reassure us that he's here for us not only for us but through us to minister and i said and i threw out a challenge to the people there, the, the staff and the faculty and the students all gathered in the chapel there, quite a large chapel. And I said, I wonder how many of you would say specifically and clearly to God, I don't know where you want to lead. I don't know when and where and what, but I want your will specifically and finally and decidedly I want only your will. And then I said, if any of you feel that way in your own heart, I would like for you to, to stand with me. And I bowed my head for a few minutes, and when I looked up, the whole chapel were standing. There were a few tears. There were some prayers, and they were standing. They were saying, Lord, I'm not sure where or what or when or why, but I want only your will. And I'd like to say, put that challenge out to us this morning. Maybe there's some great and mighty in our lives that we just want to surrender to God. Or maybe as a church, we want to say, Lord, you can use us here in the city of Lakefield for your glory and for the salvation of the lost. And I'm saying, yes, Lord, you can have what I have all of me today and we're going to sing a song that says have thine own way lord have thine own way just the first verse i am the potter uh, you are the potter i am the clay mold me and make me after thy will while i am waiting yielded and still and i'd like for those who feel in their own heart Lord, you can have us. You can have me. All of me. I'm yours this morning. If you would maybe stand with me, would you?
Let us sing this song. Have thine own way, Lord. He's pleased with Lakefield Baptist Church this morning. And I can see on down that he wants to use us. He wants to touch lives. He wants to change those who are broken and burdened and battered here in the city of Lakefield and Peterborough. He wants to use us. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you. Even in our difficulties and even in our sorrows and even in the times of woe and tears we can be assured that you want to do that great and mighty in our lives and through our lives and be a ministry to those who are needing you the most oh father we pray for lakefield baptist church this morning we pray, O oh God, that every one of us would anew and afresh turn our eyes toward you and say, Lord, you are, we're, we're yours, Lord. We're yours. Take us, use us, work in us, work through us. And to your name would be all the glory. We thank you for every person here this morning, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would use us, Lord, to your glory and to the leading of many to the very cross of Jesus that died to save us. We pray in his name. Now let us receive the benediction. Father, we thank you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be here now and tomorrow and in the days ahead. We pray it. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. amen. You're, you're dismissed. <clears throat>